Good morning, college football fans. Welcome back. CFP rankings came out last night, and I've been updating all of my tables accordingly. As I look at the matchups for this weekend in the conference championships games, I really have to ask myself, do these games matter? And should they be played? Would we be better off using them as just a, an entry round into a proper playoff system? I think that answer becomes very obvious as we look at it as there are not equal stakes on the line for any of the teams that are in this week's set of games. The SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, and Pac-12 all have teams that are currently seated in the top four of the college football playoff. Those are Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Southern California, respectively. They have to play their way into the, into the college football playoff, while those that are waiting are Ohio State, Alabama, Tennessee, and Penn State. They have to do nothing and hope that one of these two teams slip up. They get the bye, they get the time to rest, and if there's an upset, upset, it's not the team that upset that top seed in the conference championship that gets in, it's the team that's waiting off in the background, getting a nice rest and enjoying it, that will make it into the college football playoff. The big prize that everybody plays for from the beginning of the year is to get into the college football playoff. This year, those will be the Fiesta Bowl and the Peach Bowl for the semifinal play. But the only four teams that have a shot at that in these conference championships are Georgia, TCU, Southern Cal, and Michigan. Currently, if nothing changes or somehow they could just get a bye this week, they would be in and selected in the, in the playoff system. But instead, they're set up to potentially take a fall from either LSU, Kansas State, Utah, or Purdue. And that fall may or may not be completely devastating for them to actually reach their end goal. So does this game matter? Yeah, it matters a lot on one side of it. On the other side, they're just playing spoilers. Why as an athletic director would you want that to happen to your top team? So what are the underdogs playing for? Well, in the case of the SEC and the Big 12, if LSU or Kansas State wins, they're playing for bids into the Sugar Bowl. If Utah or Purdue wins, they're playing for bids into the Rose Bowl. Now, these are not shabby bowls, and you know what? The losers aren't going to be in bad shape either, but that's what they have to play for if you're going to look at that from why show up to this game and risk your injury and all that kind of thing. When you look at this from the New York Six Bowl perspective, these aren't shabby bowls that the conference champion would go to if they don't make it into the CFP. The issue here is you're going to have three and four loss teams making it into both the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, and you're gonna be stuck with one and two loss teams who may not make it into this college football playoff, try and divide to get into these remaining slots for the Cotton Bowl, and the Orange Bowl in a completely unpredictable, unpredicted fashion based upon what the CFP rankings have been trying to do for the last month. So let's think about the unthinkable. What if everyone in the top four loses? That would put us in a situation where we had Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State all with one loss, and then Southern Cal, Alabama, Tennessee, and Penn State all with two losses. Who do you think that they would take? Well, I'm guessing that the committee is going to go in this direction. Remember, none of these would be conference champions at this point in time. And so they would likely just go and take the one loss teams, which would be Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State. But here's where I think it would be a little bit tough for them. Michigan losing to an unranked team would almost be unthinkable. And I don't think that they would be able to carry through. Likewise, TCU's been on the bubble. They've not really known what to do about them. I've said many, many times, if TCU was a burnt orange color, they'd probably have been number one uh, throughout most of this season. But they weren't. They really had to fight their way into the top four or top five uh, over the last many weeks, and they had a lot of super close games. So my guess is the committee is going to bounce them as well. So knocking those two out, who would get in? Well, I think it's going to be six and seven at this point. And we would basically see that that would be Alabama and Tennessee playing. We'd have three SEC teams versus one Big Ten team. 
And I really don't think the people that are out there creating the CFP playoff system would mind that whatsoever. But it just goes to show this conference championship games that are going to happen this weekend only really serve one purpose. They're an opportunity for a spoiler to kick in. And when they do, the CFP has committed resources in such a way to make sure that none of the conference champions would get in and that their preferred conferences will actually play in these games. So do we need these games? That was my original question. I think the answer this year is clearly no. If we go out there and let them decide it on the field, all we're going to do is create more controversy in a system that's already full of controversy. Right now, I think we have a clear path to who the top four teams are. We have a playoff system that would seed them in correctly. But this additional game where you got four teams that are vying to get in and four teams that are waiting for someone to screw up. Those four teams shouldn't be given the pass and just wait for that mistake. It's just not right. And there's no way that the committee is going to take a three or four loss conference champion into this. And I've shown you that while the CFP says they prefer conference champions in the most extreme case, and it, and it may be true in one out of four of those scenarios, the conference champion will be denied and not allowed in. That's not the way it's supposed to be. The playoff system just isn't working correctly with this ranking and conference championship system, and there's no reason for it to continue this way. Just declare your conference champion based upon the regular season play and go into a 16-team playoff, no buys, and at the end of three weeks, we'll have a proper champion.